patents. <laughs> is mathematics invented or discovered? Just kidding. <laughs> Welcome to Math Science History with Gab. Is mathematics invented or discovered? And if it is invented, can it be patented? Has it ever been patented? I will discuss this in today's episode. In my podcast introduction, I say that the history of math is our intellectual foundation for understanding science. In other words, I think that math is the foundation of science and helps us to build upon our discoveries, which then lead us to incredible technical and scientific developments. In the world of science and mathematics, we consider that math is a concept of reality. It is not just the reality of the physical world. Platonic reality gives reality to the concepts that create our physical world. However, we do not force this platonic reality into our physical world. It's just already in existence thanks to the brilliance of Euclid, Menachemus, Pythagoras, and the many other brilliant mathematicians from ancient times. So, back to my first question. Is mathematics invented or discovered? Because if you think about it, science, technology, and engineering are fundamental to our existence. They have helped us to create a world that provides us a life of comfort, a world of discovery, and a hope for the future. The apparatus you are using to listen to this podcast or watch this video was created with the help of science, technology, and engineering, all of which could not have been possible without the foundations of mathematics. The cars we drive, the computers we use, the stoves that make our food, the microwaves that reheat the food that we made on the stove, the phones that we use, the cameras in our phone, pencil sharpeners, screwdrivers, watermelon trebuchets, all these things require mathematics to create them. So, if all of these things can be patented, can mathematics be patented? Because unlike ancient times that had already assumed the truth to the platonic reality of mathematics, Today, the algorithmic structure of mathematics is implemented, applied, and utilized in a computer-implemented invention. So, with this in mind, can mathematics be patented? In the 3rd century BCE, the ancient historian Pilarchus wrote that in the ancient city of Sabaris, which is in South Italy in the province of Cosenza, that the government would provide annual exclusive monetary rights to the chefs of Sabaris who created culinary masterpieces. They would have the rights to the recipes for an entire year. This was the beginning of patent law as far as I've currently researched. By the second century BCE, the architect and engineer Vitruvius served as a judge over a literary contest held in Alexandria, Egypt. Part of his role included exposing the poets who were violating the copyrights of other poets. Vitruvius would expose the poets who plagiarized the works of other poets and then try them and convict them for their theft. Then approximately 200 years later, there were indications of patent and copyright laws among Roman jurists who examined and debated ownership rights with intellectual works. These discussions centered around what made an intellectual work the property of the owner. Around the same time, one of the very first references to literary plagiarism was brought to legal attention. In the first century CE, a Roman poet named Marshall was slowly gaining fame for his works. However, Marshall discovered that another poet, Fidentinus, was reciting his poetry and claiming it as his own. Marshall then discovered that his poetry was being copied and recited by other poets as well. But because there was no precedence that gave him legal recourse, Marshall had to find a way to publicly accuse Fidentinus of stealing his property. So, Marshall authored a poem about a literary thief who was guilty of plagiaris. This Greek word, plagiaris, was used to define somebody who was kidnapping someone else's slaves. Marshall then wrote, 
Fame has it that you, Fidedentus, recite my books to the crowd as if none other than your own. If you're willing that they be called mine, I'll send you the poems for free. If you want them to be called yours, buy this one so they won't be mine. Very clever. So, the first statute that was written to protect the rights of the inventors was published on June 9th, 1421, and was written to protect the works of the architect Filippo Brunaschelli. By 1450, Venice declared that inventions had to be conveyed to the Republic so that the inventors could receive legal protection should another inventor attempt to steal their work. About 20 years later, this led to the distribution of government statues that protected the works of architects, inventors, and writers. These statutes allowed for incentive, compensation for infringement, and a term limit. Interestingly, these patent laws in Italy influenced European laws as Venetians immigrated to other parts of Europe asking for similar patent protection from other governments. Thus, by the 16th century, Queen Elizabeth I was granting patents to verifiable scientists and inventors and individuals who were financially supporting the monarchy. In the 17th century, specifically in 1624, England passed the Statute of Monopolies, which granted that the monopoly on the invention was only good for 14 years. The Statute of Monopolies stated that these inventions had to be new and not built on the concept of previous patents. However, these patents did not cover literary works. Literary works weren't protected by government statutes until 1710 with the Statute of Anne. This statute protected the works of authors who were losing profit due to publishing houses copying their works without the author's consent. Finally, by 1790, patent rights reached the United States when the United States government provided patents for 14 years to those who created useful, important, and new inventions. Today, the patent is only good for 20 years, just two decades. This is where we get into the history of patents as it relates to mathematics. By 1849, patents were required to be, quote, non-obvious to other professionals in the same field, unquote. In other words, the United States inventions had to prove novelty, usefulness, and non-obviousness. In Europe, this is referred to as the inventive step. Well, mathematics is often used in the applications of computer engineering. For computations, Algorithms are often used for developing software. In some cases though, if you take an algorithm that on its own could not be patented and apply it to a technical application that unleashes a useful outcome, it could potentially be patented. For example, on November 26, 1996, the United States granted a patent to Germany's Fraunhofer Institute for the digital encoding process used on the MPEG audio layer 3, also known as the MP3. The digital encoding process goes like this. Sound is a complex waveform, and it's constantly varying between high peaks and low peaks. Computers operate using binary numbers. So, to create digital audio, the sound waves must be measured at regular intervals, okay? However, these intervals dictate the quality of the sound. As a result, the quality will depend on how often the measurements are gathered. This is known as sampling rate. Additionally, the quality depends on how many values are assigned to the waveform, otherwise known as bit depth. The process of compression involves analyzing what the human ear can hear. Whales and elephants can hear exceptionally low sounds. These low sounds mathematically are represented with an exceptionally large, long, complex waveform. Alternatively, birds and tiny animals like mice can hear extremely high sounds. Mathematically, these high sounds are represented by the slope of a line of the waveform. The higher the slope, the higher the frequency. However, 
humans can't hear some of these frequencies. Our range is limited to 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So we can't hear what birds can hear. So with the MP3 compression, a mathematical process is applied called the Fourier series. The Fourier series looks at a period of complex waves and sums them up into a periodic function. By creating this periodic function, the math allows us to find those frequencies that sit outside of the range that humans can hear and thereby remove them. This creates a wave with less information and data than the original, thereby compressing the information. So, even though the Fourier series was not per se patented, the compression process that uses it was. Such is also the case of the fast Fourier transform, FFT. The FFT algorithm was developed in 1965 by two Princeton math professors, James Cooley and John Tukey. Like the Fourier series, the FFT reduces the steps required to analyze curves. However, the FFT reduces the number of steps to analyze a curve by an extraordinary amount. As a result, it has become commonplace and routinely used in computation processes. However, even though this mathematical method is a valuable tool in computers, it is not unique. This is because the FFT was built upon the Fourier series, which was first implemented and published in 1807 by John Baptiste Joseph Fourier in his book, Treatise on the Propagation of Heat in Solid Bodies. Though the concept was brilliant, according to patent law, because it's math, it's considered obvious. So, back to my original question, is mathematics invented or discovered? Well, in the case of the FFT, it was invented for the purpose of reducing computational processes. But in the case of John Baptiste Fourier, it was discovered. But as we have discovered, it cannot be patented. In his book, Patently Mathematical, Jeff Suzuki writes about this. He shows that though one cannot patent a mathematical algorithm, one can attempt to patent the apparatus that executes the algorithm. This was the case in the 2014 Supreme Court decision of Alice Corp versus CLS Bank International. Between 1999 and 2010, the Alice Corporation obtained four patents for an alleged computer that could automate and reduce settlement risk, which is the risk that one party in a financial agreement will perform the duty imposed by the agreement while the other party will not. According to Alice Corp, this computer could track the balances of both parties' bank accounts. This computer would then have the bank accounts for both parties complete the financial transaction. It would only authorize the transaction if both parties had the capacity to perform the transactions. In 2002, Alice Corp accused CLS Bank of using similar technology and accused CLS of infringement of their patents. CLS responded by suing Alice Corp in federal district court. To prove that they did not infringe upon Alice, CLS pursued a declaratory judgment that Alice's four patents were unenforceable because the patents did not have any source code, nor did Alice create a prototype of the computer that is referenced in the patents. The district court ruled in favor of CLS, stating that abstract constructs such as escrow cannot be patented, stating that a computer system merely configured to implement an abstract method is no more patentable than an abstract method that is simply electronically implemented. The Alice Corp appealed, in which the appellate court ruled in Alice's favor. However, the federal court vacated the ruling, which then led the case to the circuit court. However, the federal circuit court couldn't agree on whether an invention implemented by a computer is an abstract idea and ineligible for a patent. As a result, the concept of patenting a computer or a computer program became unclear. The reason is that in a patent, the concept cannot be a natural phenomenon or a natural act. However, a computer, its software, and the mathematical algorithms are not natural phenomena. As a result, this 
Supreme Court decision provided a little support for defining what kind of software, source code, and algorithms can be patented. Here's where it leads into mathematics. Algorithms are built on mathematics. And now that we are creating machine learning algorithms that are crunching big data, these algorithms need to be protected. And luckily today, algorithms can be patented in some countries. But because of cases like Alice versus CLS, it's not a straightforward process. In the United States, patenting an algorithm requires breaking down the software algorithm into a series of mathematical steps that show a process. By making it a process, the algorithm is no longer an abstract idea, but a procedure. As a result, today, the math still cannot be patented, but the series of mathematical applications can. Regardless, patenting algorithms and software is a complex process, which on some level is unfortunate for software companies. Even though software is built on mathematics, software is not mathematics. Software is the construct of mathematical algorithms. By not patenting these algorithms, software companies become susceptible. Unpatented software stacks the odds against businesses, which is bad for innovation. Software companies are not trying to patent numbers or equations. They're trying to patent a process by which the mathematics is applied. And just like the chefs of Sabaris, whose recipes were protected by the government, these developers deserve to have their creations protected as well. So, back to my original question. Is mathematics invented or discovered? Or both? Why couldn't it be both for the sake of our future? Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, carpe diem. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. Three things. Also, if you want more math, more science, and more history, come on over to patreon.com slash math science history, where I provide bonus math and early releases of my videos. And also, if you just want to listen to the podcast, you can find math science history on basically any podcast platform. So until next time, carpe diem.